fear for the U.S. housing market, and that is home buyers going on tilt. I want to talk about March home sales. Folks, if you are in the real estate industry, I'm going to need some help with from you. I'm not sure if March sales are going to be a complete disaster or if they might exceed February. More on that in a minute. We can talk about housing from 1978 to 1988. Hopefully you've seen the 54-year spreadsheet and you know where I'm going. We can talk about what Fed President Chris Waller said. And finally, chief economist from Pantheon Macroeconomics, Ian Shepardson, he is saying get ready for five, five rate cuts in 2024. So folks, let's get into it. Let's talk about March home sales first. I had a great conversation with an excellent agent in Austin, Texas yesterday, Danielle, Dan, Danielle, 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 I forget. I think it's Danielle. Anyways, the point of that conversation was to talk about the NAR settlement, but during that conversation, we uncovered that Austin, Texas, Austin, Texas is significantly behind February closings to the tune of 10 to 15%. Why is that important? Well, folks, as I have been trying to share with you in the world, rates matter. In February, remember, I called it. I nailed it. I told the experts they were wrong. They were fools. They were calling for home sales to go down. And I said, you guys are idiots. It's going to be a blowout number. And it was. It came in at 4.38 million. So based on my conversation with Danielle, I now believe March will greatly disappoint. Now, why is that? Well, folks, you have to remember the timeline of buying homes. The homes that closed in February were in contract in January. And if you don't remember, let me remind you that January had some of the lowest interest rates thus far in 2024. I have said repeatedly that above seven bad, below seven good, and I believe the February results will show that. Now, where do I need help? I had two conversations, one with Danielle and then one with Adrian Hernandez. In Austin, Texas, it is pretty clear, at least based on the numbers from yesterday, that Austin is going to have less closings in March than they did in February. I then went right into a conversation with Adrian Hernandez where we talked about LA County, right? LA and then Orange County. We talked a lot about Orange County because it was kind of the best comparison I would have with Austin, right? It's a, it's a high price point for the area. And it looks like Orange County is already ahead of February sales with several days left to go. So I want to know from you, if you have access to the MLS or in your area, I want to know how, what market you're in, and then is your market ahead of February closings already or significantly behind? If you can do me a favor, leave comments below. I would love to get a picture of the country. I have a sneaky suspicion that home sales, existing home sales, which won't be reported for at least three weeks, are going to significantly disappoint. We will be nowhere close to 4.4 million. In fact, it would not shock me if we are much closer to 4.1 million. But I need your help. What do you see? Maybe, maybe Austin is the outlier, the exception. Maybe Texas and Florida are behind, but the rest of the country is okay. I don't know. But you tell me. I would, I would like to know that. Uh, let's talk about chief economist Ian Shepardson. He's the chief economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics. He has shared many charts here recently talking about uh, the fact that the Fed may be prompted to do five rate cuts in 2024. And folks, he is talking about Q2. I don't know if you guys know this. But Q2 starts Monday. April 1st is Q2. I want to remind you, Q2 is like four days away. What have you done in Q1? A lot of you have talked about wanting to do something in housing or real estate or YouTube or getting in shape or whatever it is. 
Remember that Chris Williamson quote, I may butcher it, butcher it, but basically the magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. If you need help, you need to get in a group or whatever it is, become part of One Rental at a Time. It's an amazing community, amazing Facebook group that will hold you accountable. All we talk about is the buy box, discipline, all of that, right? Get focused, start doing the work. Back to Ian Shepherdson. Labor market is going to crack is his call. The labor market is going to crack. He suggests that you watch two things very closely. One, retail sales. Two, weekly unemployment claims. He believes both of those are going to start. And then a third is rising layoffs. The long called for recession, which fair enough, Ian called for a recession in 2023. He is not hiding that fact. He is admitting that 2023 was stronger than he expected. But he has charts like small business hiring intentions are down. Small businesses can't get loans. We've actually had this conversation with Lance Lambert, shoot, six or nine months ago. It is going to crush small businesses. It's going to crush small builders. He also expects that unemployment claims are set to rise, if not spike, in the near future. You and I will be checking every Thursday. And then finally, he points at the quit rate. The quit rate is below 2020 levels. What is the quit rate? And the quit rate is basically how, basically it shows you how comfortable or fearful you are of quitting one job and going to another. So the fact that the quit rate is down shows that the labor market is tight, according to Ian. So again, very, very interesting. We have him talking about five rate cuts. My very next article, Fed President Christopher Waller is out saying, hey, 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 hey. We are in no rush to cut. We are in no rush to cut. Inflation is proving to be more sticky and difficult to pull down than we expected. Uh, so again, no, um, no rush to cut. So I, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time believing given the data that you and I have seen and the fact that the Fed is data dependent, that any rate cut would occur before July. And then at that point, folks, we are just too far into the year to get five rate cuts if the rate cuts are a quarter at a time. So again, I'm not sure we're going to have the time to get there. So again, pay attention. Um, one of the uh, earnings that I wanted to watch, there are actually two that I wanted to watch this week. One was Carnival Cruise and one was RH or Restoration Hardware. The reason I wanted to watch both of these is because I want to know what was going on with the consumer. What was going on with travel? what was going on with the affluent consumer. Remember, discretionary income, the top 20%, the top 20 spend 50% of discretionary income. So let's do Carnival Cruise Line first. Carnival Cruise Line, all-time record booking levels, record Q1 revenue, uh, customer deposits reached a record 7 billion in Q1, 1.3 billion above the previous Q1 record. And oh, by the way, prices are up year on year. They're not having to discount as much. So it looks like travel, experience-based travel is certainly not declining. That said, if you haven't cruised a lot, let me tell you, Carnival Cruise Line is not an affluent cruise line. It has a much lower price point. We have cruised on Carnival, I think twice, maybe three times. It is a blast. You gotta, you gotta know what you are getting into. It is not Regent. It is not some of these higher end cruise lines, uh, but it is a blast. The comedy shows are hilarious, uh, but you are definitely booking um, a cruise that is going to, uh, is a lower price point. So. Again, if you haven't cruised yet, Carnival is a great one to try. But again, travel experience is strong. And again, record level strong. Take that for what you will. Now RH, Restoration Hardware. Restoration Hardware is clearly, clearly an affluent place. Their fixtures and doorknobs and hardwares are expensive. Have I ever bought something from RH? 
I don't think I have bought anything from RH. It's above my comfort level for whatever they're selling. But again, RH, they missed top line, missed bottom line. So they did not hit their revenue, did not hit their earnings number for the quarter. Not surprising. If the affluent are truly pulling back, a la Lululemon, a la Gucci, wouldn't shock us that RH missed as well. Here's the, here's the twist. Here's the wrinkle. They raised their guidance for 2024. They expect revenue to grow 8 to 10%. The market was expecting 6 So they raised guidance. RH CEO said, and I quote, improving demand trends. I don't know about you, but call me skeptical. Call me skeptical. I am not sure I buy it. This could be, first off, could absolutely be true. Absolutely could be true. It also could be true that this is an individual that is looking to speak good news into existence. So I don't know. If you, uh, if you travel or shop at an RH hardware or hardware, whatever they're doing, let me know. Um, I haven't shopped at one, haven't bought anything, so let me know. So let's talk about my biggest concern for the U.S. housing market. I have shared this in passings in other conversations, but I have not shared it on the daily financial news. So I want to make it very clear. My greatest fear for the U.S. housing market is that rates come down from, from say, 6.8 to, say, 6.5. At that point, we have two years, perhaps two and a half years of home buyers being frustrated with the housing market. We have people that want a home. We have people that have written offers. We have people that have been outbid repeatedly. And then my greatest fear. My greatest fear is rates go to 6.5. Buyers start to say stupid things. Like, honey, we are buying this home no matter what. That is code for doing bad or stupid things, making unwise financial decisions because of emotions. I believe if rates go low enough that there may be enough buyers who are just frankly pissed off that all rational thought leaves and then they buy. And then of course, buyer remorse sticks in. They will likely be underwater because they overpaid. They will likely be in very tight financial situations. I call this home buyers going on tilt. If you've ever played games or poker or any of those, you know when someone goes on tilt, they make irrational decisions and it usually does not work out well. So my fear of this, again, it will not happen in a week, a month, or a quarter. Home buyers going on tilt will be a multi-quarter event. It will lead to home prices going up more than they should. It will lead potentially to what everybody's been calling a bubble. You might, if, I, if my fear happens, hear me say home prices are in a bubble. And then, of course, you could watch what Olivia and I do. If I tell you I'm selling, that will be your sign. I do not want to sell my cash flow rentals. It is how I pay my bills. But if home prices shoot up another, I don't know, pick a number, 10, 15, 20% because of low inventory and home buyers going on tilt, I may be forced to repeat what we did in that book right there. If you haven't read this book right here, right in the middle of it, we talk about selling eight houses and going to 80 units. It might might happen again. I could see a world of home buyers going on tilt that by the summer of 2025, we are selling homes and flipping into commercial. Why? Just like this book. Commercial was distressed. Single family homes were priced at stupid levels. That is my greatest fear. Home buyers go on tilt. My hope is rates stay 7%. And we just go like this for years to come. Alrighty, folks, I'm seeing more and more people talk about housing from 1978 to 1988. This is the high interest rate environment. This is stagflation. This is double dip recession. 
all kinds of bad things. And of course, the doomers are out telling you that home prices will crash. Well, folks, if you've taken time to download my free 54-year spreadsheet, yes, 54 years, no longer 53, uh, shout out John for updating 2023, we know that 1978 to 1988 is important. Why is it important? Two reasons. One, home prices doubled. Now, they doubled in nominal terms, not real. Nominal, not real. But again, they doubled. Number two, transactions crashed. Folks, in fact, 1988 still did not have as many transactions as 1978. Yes, folks, the housing market crashed, but it was in transactions, not price. But of course, if you've been on this channel, you know that already. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to onerentalatatime.com. You'll see a series of eight boxes. In the lower right corner, you can get the 54-year spreadsheet for free. All it needs is your email, and then it will auto-email you the spreadsheet. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you wanna check the numbers, Every data point is sourced. You go to the right, you go to the last tab or the right of the spreadsheet. Everything's got links. You can check the record for yourself. It is pretty amazing. Next up, folks, I want to remind you that that very special shirt called Cash Flow Over Everything, it will not be available April 1st. This is not an April Fool's joke. I am only releasing one rental at a time t shirts a month at a time. The shirt will go away. You have three days left to get it. Lots of you have said, hey, I need to buy that shirt. Well, you are running out of days. You can get the cash flow over everything. Special one rental at a time shirt. You can get it on my website, onerentalatatime.com. Also, again, folks, we are already on the cusp of Q2. If you are thinking about doing the work, but you're not sure how, get the course, how to get started one rental at a time. It is a whopping $399. That is it. In addition to that, I'm still going to give away the Las Vegas event, which is worth 200 bucks. So spend 400, get 600 and just get in the game. And then lastly, if you spend the money, join the Facebook group with 2000 other uh, members that could tell you or help network and say what's going on. Alrighty, folks, lastly, crazy, crazy statistics. There was an article put out by CNBC Make It talking about a family of four. What does it take for a family of four to live comfortably in some of the biggest U.S. cities? These numbers scared me. These are frightening. Honolulu, 299 grand. Oakland, California, Oakland, California, 316 grand. New York, 318. Arlington, Virginia, 318. Boston, Massachusetts, 319. San Jose, California, 334. And the most expensive city, which you could not pay me to live in, which I canceled my warrior season tickets because I can't stand the city, San Francisco. San Francisco, $339,000. Folks, that is insane. No wonder people are fleeing these cities. No wonder people are moving else to other cheaper locations. For example, if Austin is too expensive, you might go to Colleen, Texas. If Orlando is too expensive, you might go to Lakeland, Florida. Folks, it is called switching costs, quality of life, things of that nature. Folks, have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment. We've got nine, we've got 100 people watching live, only 18 thumbs up. I think we can do better than that. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment. Tell your friends to join. Take care. Bye.